Okay, I told y'all that uh, we were doing a part two of the two sides that I wanted to show y'all this morning. Our first one was the uh, bacon, Brussels bacon and apple Brussels sprouts. Ooh, that's good. And this one is called zucchini fritters. It's, it's gluten free, it's keto friendly, it's low carb, and it's very, very good. And it's got two medium zucchinis is what the recipe calls for. But today I'm using zucchini. All of this came out of our garden. I'm using zucchini, I'm using yellow, and I'm using snake squash, and I'm using trombone, trombone, trombone. Mm -hmm. And Roy's going, while I'm grading all this, Roy is going to explain to y'all what these, uh, what these squash right here are. But I'm just using a mixture show, so I can show y'all how you can use all of these different squash in your dishes. So, as you can see, I've already started grating my zucchini. So, I just use a box grater. So, I'm going to finish grating all of this squash. And I'm going to let Roy explain to you what, uh, what the squash... Now, he loves to plant different stuff in the garden, stuff we've never heard of, stuff that we've never seen. Last year, we planted long, what we call long beans. And some of them were, can you see? Some of them were this long. And you just snap them and use them like you do green beans. They were delicious. So this year, this is a snake squash. This is a trombone squash. And then we got our zucchini in yellow. So I'm going to let him tell y'all about that while I finish grating the squash. All right, let's start with the trombone. It's, it has a curve and it has a bulb. Sort of reminds you of a trombone. And so they call it trombone. You can uh, look it up on YouTube or uh, videos. And there's lots of recipes for it. But basically you can use it any way you use a yellow squash. Uh, or a zucchini squash. They don't have exactly the same flavor. They're a little milder. This neck is solid. You only have seeds down in the bottom of it. So when you start cutting, you can just chip, 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 chip. They can see right here. What? Right? See there? So Let that's the end. Them. Let me show them this one. There you go. That's the end of the trombone. Now, this is a snake squash. And it is straight, it doesn't have the swell at the bottom. Uh, they taste pretty much the same. This is, the snake squash is not actually a true squash. Uh, it is more like a gourd, snake gourd, but they are good. The one thing you have to do with this uh, snake squash, you have to uh, scrape either with a knife, just slightly scrape this outside uh, thin peeling off, or you can use a potato peeler and just strip it off and then you can cook it. Uh, this snake squash comes from uh, Vietnam, I believe, but there's in, in Asia, Malaysia, India, there's a lot of these that are cooked. This trombone comes from uh, Italy and they can both be used in a lot of Italian dishes, a lot of curry dishes, uh, anyway, you would use a uh, regular squash. You can use these. Uh, I love it with uh, some kind of marinara sauce over it. She cooks it in, in those kinds of dishes. You can use these squashes because they're uh, a little more substantive than the yellow squash, which they'll go to mush real quickly. These don't. You have to cook them a little longer if you want them to be real, real tender. Of course, I like a little crunch in mine, so, but you can use this as the pasta in an Italian dish. If you're, especially if you're staying off of flour, trying to stay low carb, these are wonderful, but you may have to grow them at home. But uh, one of the reasons that I started growing these is because, and Rose is through grading, so I'll make this quick. Uh, in Georgia, uh, it's hard to keep squash going all summer because of the squash borer that kills your vines and uh, some leaf diseases and also the uh, cucumber uh, pickle worm 
that uh, actually ruin your squash if you don't spray them or treat them some way. But anyway, the, uh, these squash prolong your season because they're, vi they're vines. They are not just regular squash. In other words, these grow about to 25 foot long. Uh, the, the vines do. And the, the, the boar can't- 25 inches. 25 foot long, the vines. I'm oh, talking the vines. Oh, okay. No, they grow, up to, they grow up to a yard long if you just hang them on <laughs> okay. the fence. But if you just hang them on a fence or grow them on a Rio Grande fence around your yard, they grow and you'll have them all the way to the fall because the bugs can't destroy these that easily. So that's one of the reasons we decided. They're wonderful fried or any other squash dish that you normally use, but fry them as chips, they work really well. And so let me get back over here. Rose is bumping me. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to hard to it's take hard, it back from me. It's hard to take it back from him. When he gets to talking about his garden and what he grows in his garden, he loves it. And so now this is a combination of yellow squash, the trombone, the snake squash, and the zucchini. And uh, now I fried some of the snake squash yesterday oh, and, that's great. in chips and it was delicious. So now you put, uh, this, is, so this is the equivalent of like two medium zucchini. So you put a teaspoon of salt over this and you stir it up. Now, zucchini is 95% water. So what I'm gonna do, I put a teaspoon of salt over the zucchini. I'm gonna let it sit and I'm gonna let it sweat for 20 minutes. And that's gonna draw a lot of that water out. And when I fry zucchini, I do that. I sprinkle, after I slice them, I sprinkle salt over them and I let them sit for like 20 or 30 minutes, draw a lot of that water out. And then I pour that water off and then I continue uh, frying them like I usually would. So I'm gonna stir this salt up in this zucchini or in this squash. And I'm gonna let it sit for 20 minutes. <clears throat> and after 20 minutes, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you exactly how much water is in this squash. So uh, I'm gonna let this just sit here for 20 minutes and then we'll uh, come back and we'll finish our fritters. Okay. Uh, I left this 10 extra minutes because I put the uh, the yellow squash and the trombone and the snake squash in with it. With just the zucchini, 20 minutes is all you have to uh, all you have to leave it in order to get all your water out. But I am going to. This is just a paper towel here, and as you can see, all that water in the bottom. But that's not as much water as it would be if it was just the zucchini. So you can see all this water that I'm squeezing out there. Gracious. I'm gonna pick up some of this. Look, look at all that water. You see it? Now this is how much water. Your fritters would just sort of come apart in the pan if you had that much well, water they in would, Yeah, they wouldn't, they wouldn't bind together. Okay. So you squeeze the water out as much as you can get out with your hand and in there. Now I've got a paper towel here, which is probably gonna come apart, but that's all right. Now, look. Good gracious. See all that water? And you're still not gonna get all the water. But the salt releases that water. The salt pulls all that water out and it's just running down my hand. And you can just keep squeezing. And <laughs> squeezing more water. And squeezing. <laughs> and squeezing. Now I have to use a paper towel because I don't have one of those little veggie bags. You can buy the little veggie bags or you can use cheesecloth, but cheesecloth is so expensive now. I went to buy some the other day and it was like $8 for a little sheet of thing, a little pack of cheesecloth. So I didn't get it. So I'll just use paper towel for right now, but you can buy the little bags that you put your veggies in and just squeeze all the water out. So 
I'm still squeezing and I'm still getting water. <laughs> but my paper towel is breaking apart. So that's about all of it. So now what I, you just take and peel that paper towel off. And all that squash, when you get all the water out of it, it's, uh, it, you don't have, you have half, about half what you did. I'm going to pour this out because I'm going to mix it in this bowl. Okay, now, this is about two medium zucchinis right here with most, as much of the water pulled out as we could get. Now, to that... I'm going to, uh, two large eggs that I have beaten, medium to large eggs that I've already beaten. And you can either use onion or shallot. Step back a little bit, baby, so they go, because I couldn't, you were blocking the light. This is some purple onion that we grew in the garden, so that's just what I'm using today. And it's about one medium purple onion about like that, or a shallot about like, about that size. And it calls for uh, one teaspoon of garlic. So I'm putting that. A half teaspoon of onion powder. Now when I say garlic, you, always, you know I always use garlic powder, never garlic salt. And in mine, I put a few dashes of cayenne pepper the red pepper because we like it so uh we like that little extra bite in there so just but don't keep shaking unless you really like it hot no no and do not put any more salt now i'm gonna put pepper but do not put any more salt because you got you have that you that salt in them to begin with now this is a half cup of almond flour you can use coconut flour if you prefer but uh, I have the almond flour, and this is a cup, a fourth cup, if I can get it out, fourth cup of uh, the shredded Parmesan cheese. You can use Italian style if you want to. Uh, you can use goat cheese. I, I saw a recipe where you can use goat cheese, but I prefer... I cannot stand goat cheese. I don't like it at all. And well, you don't have to be so blunt. <laughs> well, I don't. I do not like it. I tried it one time and I said never again. Now you can use yeah. regular flour in this if you're not trying to keep it uh, low, low carb or gluten free. Could you? I guess you could. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, and I've got just enough, maybe an eighth of a cup. Just enough uh, oil in the bottom, and this is just uh, vegetable oil to coat the bottom of my skillet. So I'm going to stir this up real good. Get this all incorporated in here. Good gracious, it's raining, honey. Mm -hmm. It does that twice a year here. <laughs> Who knew it was going to rain today? <laughs> I'm anxious to see because I cook these, this is, when I got this recipe, I cooked it every day for three or four days because I love it so good. But I'm anxious to see the difference in the texture it's going to have with all these different squash in it than it does just the zucchini. Well, all of us, the grandchildren and everybody loved them. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. You kept putting them on the stove and we kept walking know, off with them. I know, I did. So the more you stir this stove, the more of that water is going to come out of the squash. So you stir it just enough to get it all incorporated in. And I'm going to see, my hands are clean now, y'all know that. So I'm going to see if, it, if it's going to stick together when I try to fry it. If it's not, I'll add a little bit more flour to it because... Uh, Sometimes you just can't get, by squeezing it, enough of the water out. And if you can't, then you just add a little bit of flour to it to bind it together a little bit more. 
So uh, I'm going to give this uh, water just a few minutes. I mean, this oil, be sure to not cook it in water. Give this oil just a few minutes to uh, come up to temp. And it's, it's almost there. I tell you what I'm gonna do. Just in case, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna get a little bit more almond flour just in case I need it. Now this was just a good tablespoon uh, that I put in this bowl just in case I need it to, to hold it together. We'll see when I start frying it. I'm gonna put a couple in there. And you just get about whatever size you want them, but we like them about like that. And I've got it on number seven, which is like medium high on my uh, stove. I am gonna put just a half a tablespoon more of the almond flour in there because uh, I'm scared they're going to kind of tear up when I when I go to turn them. But we'll see. But that egg helps bind them together too. So. Now you're hearing it fry. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. This is really, really good, y'all. And you don't want to crowd them in the pan. You want to give them plenty of room to, to fry with that. I'm going to mash that one down a little bit. So it's, I'm going to fry these in two batches. Okay, let me wash my hands. Now, you just let them cook till they get golden brown. I'm going to try to I'm get another spatula. I'm going to try to see how those first two are kind of wanting to tear up just a little bit. But I'm going to leave them there. Uh, until they until they get golden brown on the bottom and I'm gonna get a dish to put it in. And it takes about uh, probably four minutes on one side and four minutes on the other side. So we're gonna I'm gonna kind of try to move them. They want to stick a little bit. So I'm just going to very gently go underneath there with my spatula. And slide them. Slide them. Yeah, try to get them. Some oil under them. This pan, sometimes it does that. And I, I can't figure out why it does. But, uh, but when I'm frying different things, sometimes this pan will, will stick. Uh, so I, I really shouldn't use it, I guess. But, all right, I'm gonna try to turn this one. Mm. All right, that one wasn't quite ready to turn, so I'm gonna let this one cook a little bit longer. Well, that's looking good. Oh, they are delicious. Mm, I'm gonna get a couple good of too. napkins, honey, I'm out of paper towels to drain that on. Well, we'll just watch this fry. <laughs> Cause it's looking good to me. Go back to the pantry and get some paper towels. So I'll just put a couple of napkins there to uh, to drain this on once they get ready. And with this today, I cooked a pork roast yesterday. And Instapot, cool. Just put it in. It's really, it was a Boston butt, is mm -hmm. what it was. That's one of Roy's favorite uh, meats is Boston butt, and it's Cody's too. He came in yesterday and I had cooked it. And he said, oh, Grandma, dear, what kind of meat is this? This is delicious. So we're having our uh, Brussels sprouts with apples and bacon. We're having our uh, zucchini fritters. And we are having our uh, Boston butt. 
And I cook that in the air fryer with, I mean, in the Instant Pot, the, the uh, Boston Butt, I cooked it with salt, pepper, and garlic, and just cooked it for like an hour, and very, very good, very tender. So, okay, I'm gonna turn this one, honey, they look like this. Oh, wow, now then. That's how they're supposed to look. Oh, yeah. Right there. That is exactly how they're supposed to look. Okay, they're staying together pretty good, so I'm gonna go ahead. And you can see about how many this makes when you do them this size. And when, you, when you're when you putting them in your pan, you don't wanna mash them together. I mean, like, just mash them because they'll mash some of that water out. So you just gently Put them in your hand and gently press them. Press them. Yeah, you don't want to really press them. So um, these will be ready. Like I say, it's about four minutes on one side and four minutes on the other side. And these two have the just half cup of uh, of almond flour. These right here, I put the extra tablespoon. And but I think they'd have been fine if I hadn't. Them. But just in case. I, I didn't want them falling apart in my pan. So that's just something you'll have to, it's according to how much water you can squeeze out of your squash. Now if you've got one of those little vegetable bags, I mean you can just keep squeezing and keep squeezing until you get almost all the water out. But the way I do it, and I've got to order me one of those little vegetable bags because I do these a lot. So that's just Something we're always gonna have to let me order from Amazon. <laughs> They've added a driver to this route <laughs> just for Rose. So uh, she has her own private uh, drivers delivering her stuff. That, that should tell you about how much. That's not true. But now I do order a lot of my gluten-free and a lot of my uh, like swerve monk fruit, things like that, because we don't, our nearest Kroger or Publix or big grocery store is like 30, 35 miles from us. And I mean, I'll send me 76 years old. It's easier for me just to go online and order it and it's just as cheap. Now, if it's a lot cheaper in the grocery store, I'll make a special trip to get it. But if it's not, I'll order it on Amazon. That's just easy for me. So, okay. Ooh. Oh yeah, I like them good and brown and crisp. Oh, that one's good. That one's good. That one's in the center. I'm gonna take it out. Oh. But that right there is exactly how you want them. You want them that golden brown. You have to watch them because. All right, I'm gonna turn that one back over. Yeah, you cheated on that first one you took up. I think on the on the flip side, just because it was real done on one side. No, I don't think so, but maybe I'll do it. Okay. And then you just keep putting them in. I'm going to turn them down a little bit because they are getting brown and I want them to get. I want them to be done in the middle, but it really doesn't take them, take them that long. But look at that crusty, man. Oh. That's that crusty zucchini. Mm. That's going to be good. But I want to show y'all something. Look in this look in this bowl. You see that water? See? They're still drinking. The water is still coming out. Mm -hmm. And that's after you added more flour. Yes, that's the reason. I'm going to order me one of them little bags so I can get a lot more of my water out. It doesn't take much of an excuse for her to order something. <laughs> Let me tell you. She has an itchy finger. <laughs> okay. Take that one out. I think these are done. I know this one's done. Okay. Now, if you don't like them quite as brown as we do, you can always cut your, uh, cut your, uh, Tim. temperature back to like whatever. Well, you know, you'll know your oven. I mean, your stove. I could cut it back to six and it wouldn't be quite as brown, but we like, we do like 
that crispy brown on ours. So, uh, and I was watching a video the other day of a woman, whoop, that one's got, that one may tear up because it was in the very bottom and it's got a lot of water in it. So, let me wash them out. Alright, I'm going to take these up. And the lady I watched making them, hers look just like this. She called it golden brown. That's what she called it. So, I'm scared that one's going to tear up because it was in the very bottom. And it's got more water in it. So it's going to take these just a few more minutes to cook. I'm going to take it out of the center. It seems like that the center browns a lot quicker than the... I'm going to take one of these, this first one. Now that is perfect. Oh, yeah. Right there. Yeah, you can see now that it's not burned. It's just no, uh -uh. really it's, good and brown. As she called it golden brown. That's mm -hmm. what she called it. I'm going to um, open it up. And see, you can see in there, it's well done. Mm -hmm. The squash, the almond flour, yep. it's well done. So, let me check on these. Okay. This is the one I'm scared it's going to tear up. Oh, it didn't. Okay. You just have to have the quick hand, honey. Very good. All right, I'm still going to turn it down a little bit. Because as you can see, my oil is getting brown because I've, uh, it's getting just a little bit of oil in there. So, I'm going to taste this one. Oh, that looks good. Mmm. Mm. Red pepper. Put Just a, a little. Put a few sprinkles of red pepper in it. Puts it right over the edge, doesn't Puts it? Puts it over the top. Mm-hmm. It does. All right, I'm going to take that one out. Woo, I might put a few, few sprinkles too much. <laughs> <laughs> Two sprinkles too much, okay. A few sprinkles too much. No, I'm just kidding. We like it like that. So, I'm going to turn my burner off because these will still keep cooking. And I'm going to leave them in the pan. And honey, mm. you haven't got to taste today. Let me ask you something. Yeah. What would a taste of, what would a squeeze of lemon on that be like? If you well, were eating it, while you were eating it. I wouldn't like it because I don't, I like lemon, but lemon doesn't like me that much. But uh, there is, you can use this with any kind of dip. Uh, the lady on the video that I watched, she did a Greek yogurt mm -hmm. uh, dip that she used to put over hers. And so, but we, I like it with no dip. Now, I tell you what it's good with. It is so good with my homemade, sugar-free pineapple pepper jelly. Oh, my. Now, let me tell you So I haven't done a video on that, but that's going to be my next one, I think. Pineapple pepper jelly. Pineapple pepper jelly. Oh, it'll make it you is. slap your grandmama. It is so, so good. So, I'm going to take these up. I'm going to let this one cook just a little bit longer. This one's going to kind of come apart a little bit, but that's all right. All right, I'll put it right there. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that in the pan. I'm going to let you taste, baby. I'm going to take this right. camera. I want, since I didn't like these until you cooked this dish. Yeah. And you didn't let me taste of it this time. <laughs> I'm going to get some apple and, well, I need to get my spoon. Where'd my spoon go? Okay. Here's your one. Uh, uh here's your one. There you go. Now he got a big spoon. All right. Here we go. I got bacon. I got an apple piece. You talking about something good? 
Brussels sprouts. Now this is in my part one of this video. So that's the reason we're incorporating it into this one is because that was part one. The fritters is part two. So it's better as it sits, honey. Oh, I know it's delicious. So now we got, we got meat here in the roast. We got this side and this side. Which is squash fritters. Zucchini, mm. well, it's called zucchini squash, but ours is, ours is uh, four different kinds of squash. Good, isn't it? That's edible. Yeah. I'm telling you. Now that, the fritter mm. is keto, low carb, gluten free. It's keto friendly, so. And these flavors go really well together. So this is gonna be our lunch today, is our Boston butt roast our bacon, apple bacon Brussels sprouts, and this one is ready, and our squash fritters, so. And those other kinds of squash work beautifully in this. Oh yes, it the did. Squash and the, the other squash on. work just as well. Oh yeah. Just that tad of pepper right at the end. Just oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, this may look burned to some, some of y'all, but it is not. It's just a uh, just a crisp zucchini. Mm. It's delicious. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. hope y'all try these two side dishes. They're, uh, they're really good. They're healthy. And, honey? Mm. Put the delicious back in healthy food that's what rose does all the time love y'all subscribe like and please please share these two videos because they are really really good see y'all next time